right, we're going to do problem number 22 from chapter 9 of Sir Wayne Jewett, 8th edition. The problem involves a basketball that falls through some height h, represented here, uh, with mass mp. The mass of the tennis ball is mt. The tennis ball also falls through the same height. After the basketball hits the ground, it uh, reverses direction, keeping the same velocity it had when it fell through that height h. And it's going to have a velocity line on the label as vb initial. This one's going to be going down the tennis ball, and it's going to have a velocity line on the label vt initial as well. So to figure out what velocities these objects have here, we need to use energy conservation. Say that the kinetic energy they have at the bottom is equal to the potential energy that they have right here at the top. Because if they're dropped from a rest, the only, the only energy they're going to have is potential energy. Once they get to the bottom, if we call the ground zero for potential energy, then all they're going to have is kinetic energy. So here we'll have 1 half m v squared equals mgh. The masses cancel. The velocity then is going to be given by the square root of 2gh. I'm going to call the velocity of the tennis ball since it's pointing down at negative root 2gh, and the velocity of the basketball because it's pointing up the square root of 2gh. All right. In order to understand what happens after the two objects collide up, collide off of each other, um, because we need to figure out how high this ball rises, if we know the velocity, we're going to figure that out using something similar to this. So we're going to use conservation of momentum to analyze the collision that happens. So we'll say that the initial momentum of the system is equal to the final momentum. So the initial momentum of the system is given by uh, the mass of the tennis ball times its velocity plus the mass of the basketball times its velocity. Okay, like that. Uh, the velocity of the tennis ball is given by this. Velocity of the basketball is the same, one positive, one's negative. So we'll get this mb minus mt squared 2gh. Okay. The next thing to do is to apply, um, we know that it's an elastic collision that occurs between these two, or as we're assuming it is. And for elastic collisions, we know the following is true that. Add the initial velocity of the tennis ball plus the final velocity of the tennis ball will be the same as the sum of the same thing for the basketball. I'm just going to check to see if those are still born. You can see them. Great. So now what we need to do is to replace VTI and VBI using the same thing here. What we're going to get is negative 2 times the square root of 2GH. I have omitted a step here where plug in for this one, you get negative root 2gh. You plug in for this one, you get positive root gh, 2gh. We subtract one of this side to get that. We're now going to replace VBF in this equation here with that. Okay. So we get that right there. Now we can group terms. We can have uh, this mb times negative 2 root 2gh. We can add to this side here, making this mb plus 2. So we're going to get 3mb. I've also skipped a step here where I grouped together. There's an mb vtf and an mt vtf. So we can, so we can factor out the VTF to get that. Now we can just solve for VTF by dividing by this. All right. Now what we're interested in figuring out is, okay, if that's the velocity of the tennis ball, how high does it rise? And in order to do that, we can employ energy conservation again. It's going to be the same kind of equation, except that now we can say that the initial kinetic energy of the tennis ball is equal to the potential energy that it, that it gains when it rises to that height. So the initial kinetic energy of the tennis ball is going to be 1 half m times that vt squared, this thing. And the potential energy that it reaches is going to be mg times whatever final height that it gets to. Okay. 
the mass cancels, and we get that the final height is VTF squared over 2G. So that means that all we need to do Now, uh, this final height here, we just need to square this, divide by 2g. So uh, that means that the final height, the tennis ball reaches, is this thing squared. That thing squared will give us 2gh, divided by 2g. Okay. And then we can cancel out the 2g's. This whole side here just is just h, and that's our answer. That's part A. Uh, part B asks to figure out something about uh, whether or not energy is being violated here. But the main thing to understand is that after this basketball hits the ground, it takes up a lot of, it has a huge change in momentum because it goes from pointing down to pointing up through a collision with the Earth, and then it transfers some of that energy back to the tennis ball. And of course, when a big object hits a small object, the small object is going to get a much bigger velocity. And uh, when that happens, the tennis ball can go really, really high. Obviously, three times the mass of the basketball minus the mass of the tennis ball will be a much bigger number than what's in the denominator there. And uh, so this height here that it gets to will be much higher than the height that it started at. 